My name is Ellen Harvey and the title of my project in the Generations exhibition is Alien Souvenir Stand, which is a sort of large handmade replica of a hot dog stand covered with paintings of Washington DC in ruins. So Alien Souvenir Stand comes from two things, um, two very familiar things which struck me as strange, um, both of which I saw in Washington DC. One of which is the sort of ubiquitous hot dog stands that you see everywhere in Washington DC that are completely covered with hand painted images of the various kinds of food that you can get in the stand. And I saw them and I thought, this is a fantastic way to display paintings. Why doesn't everyone display paintings like this on wheels and they can move around the city? This is fabulous. And the other thing is another thing which people think of as being again, ubiquitous. You go to Washington DC and you expect to see neoclassical architecture. And this piece was originally made for a show at the sadly now defunct Corcoran Gallery of Art. And at the time I met with the curator, and we were talking just randomly about neoclassical architecture. And she's saying, oh, well, it's what you expect to see when you come to Washington DC, because, you know, it's, it, it's, you know, it's a symbol of democracy. And I thought, well, for somebody having grown up in the UK, for me, that kind of architecture wasn't really a symbolic of democracy at all. It was symbolic of empire. And I started to think about all the different meanings that this kind of architecture had had, um, that you know, fascists loved it, the Stalinists loved it. It's a symbol of the Enlightenment, it's a symbol of the Catholic Church. It's um, almost all of the Jewish synagogues in the South of America are built as little neoclassical temples. It's fascinating. There are all these different people from different places and times who've looked at something covered with pillars and thought, that perfectly represents who I am. That, that, that represents my values. Um, so, you know, freedom fighters and slaveholders, they all like pillars. Well, I was trying to think of a way of talking about this strangeness of neoclassical architecture enduring for 2,000 years. Um, and still being and still being viable, people still like things. They still build McMansions with pillars on front. And I thought, what if a whole nother civilization with completely different and completely peculiar values found pillars and thought, this is it. This perfectly represents our core values. And I thought that's great. They could be aliens, you know. And they're my aliens, so their core values are swimming and flirting. And they've decided that uh, pillars, you know, they come in the future, we've messed up the earth, there are no people left anymore, but there's lots of pillars everywhere. And so the aliens try to figure out what this lost pillar builder civilization was. And they come to a lot of strange conclusions. They decide that um, the lost pillar builders of earth were probably telepathic because they built the same thing all over the place without communicating with each other very much. Um, it's obviously a radically egalitarian society, and that's what all those pillars represent, you know, that everyone is equal. Um, and basically, they, they, they sort of decide it's a kind of, you know, three-sex society that lives in the ocean and swims upstream once a year to flirt and build pillars. And uh, so having come up with this, I ended up writing an, a, a, you know, a guide for alien visitors to Washington, D.C., and uh, this was distributed all over Washington, D.C., and it led you to the Corcoran. And when you came to the Corcoran, there was a souvenir stand for the alien visitors. And again, because they're my aliens, and I happen to really like sort of 19th century paintings and handmade things, I made a very kind of tragic 19th century souvenir stand with lots of hand-painted souvenirs of Washington, D.C. in ruins. What's interesting about that vis-a-vis -vis looking at um, the sort of architectural past of our planet from the future is that what you're seeing is a selective architectural past, inevitably. So there's no way that, first of all, that the ruin, the ruin record can ever be comprehensive. And it's also very much a record of the winners. You know, the people who had the resources to make this sort of thing, this kind of architecture required a lot of other people who were either very poor or enslaved to build it. So it's actually a sort of rather dark universal um, 
vision of the past, which is kind of fascinating, especially in regards to America, where you have this sort of southern slaveholding mansions, which are built, you know, which are built as and very explicitly posited as being part of a sort of democratic dream of a new society. Um, and these, these two, it's, just, it's a it's a fascinating contradiction.